Good afternoon from Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Thursday. It's like 55 degrees, cloudy, and rainy. <laughs> it's uh, it's after 5 o'clock and it's just now let up. Uh, well, not let up. It's just now stopped the drizzling. It rained really hard last night, this morning for quite a while, and then it's just been drizzling all day long. So now I can finally get out here and assess the situation. But yeah, here we go. Oh no, we've got a break in the Hoogle Culture Mound Dam. No, it's not really. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the idea here with these, uh, well, once I get in there and uh, start breaking all this stuff up into Hoogle Mounds. But that's the idea is to kind of direct the water back and forth and uh, so it'll retain more of the water uh, but what I really need to do is get back towards the back of my property where this water is coming from it is my neighbors properties are higher than mine and my neighbors properties have been cleared of you know trees um, so they do not retain water and they just all of their water comes onto my place which is lower and then when it rains really hard I got a creek that runs through it and I don't mind I do not mind I'm sure uh, there are plenty of homesteads out there that would love to have the problem of too much water in some areas. I'm just lucky this dries up fast. We'll see how fast this dries up. Um, no rain for the next couple days, so I bet this will this will be dried up this weekend. Is that good, clean, fresh rainwater, Bob? I did tea. Yeah, did you teach Fifi that, or did she teach you that, or is that just all cats? Probably just all cats, they don't care. Look, water, I'm thirsty, let's drink. The spot where the cabin is going is high and dry. I like that, it is much higher than the surrounding area. Well, down here, I'm probably a good three, four feet below it right now, and it gets, uh, it gets even lower down there where all the water is. But up here, where the cabin spot is, it is nice and high and dry. And it's also, now this gravel pad is much higher than all of the surrounding ground. So there are no puddles on there. And because it all runs off, and that's good. You don't want a river running underneath your cabin. Uh, you want the water to run away from the cabin. And that's what we accomplished with all of this gravel. So. Yep, now we just gotta wait for the rain to stop. Number two, you're hatching baby chicks. Yes, you are. I saw two of them under there. I saw two baby chicks under there. Do you got any more? That was like an hour ago. It's been a whole hour since I checked on you. Yeah. Man, you, you're not supposed to have this egg. You're not going to hatch that one. You're just hatching the others. How many babies? Yeah, how many babies? Oh, yeah. No babies. We got two. We got two. Two little fluffy babies. Can you see them? Yeah. Yeah. Three babies in there. Say hello to Bobblehead Homestead. From the back side. There you go. Go find your mommy. There you go. Now let me look at this one. Yeah. Yeah. Hi there. You are very cute. And then... Yeah. 
You guys weren't, you guys were in your shell. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. There you go, Mom. Three out of six. Good job, number two. I didn't film it because it was still sprinkling, but uh, I got this brooder ready for number two and the baby chicks once they are done hatching. So yeah, um, dry hay went in there. And I took some of your suggestions where they were laying those clandestine uh, Ne uh, eggs, the clandestine nest with the eggs was inside one of those half of a pet carrier. So yeah, I just stuck the pet carrier in there and uh, plenty of hay underneath it and that will make a nice cozy little bedroom for them. Um, so yeah, I'm all ready with the, with the temporary brooder. I'm sure number two and those chicks will be free ranging uh, before long. <laughs> Right, big dude? Right, big dude? You're not going to stop him from free ranging. That is one of the white and true blue cockerels, roosters now, that I was considering keeping because I liked his looks. He has a beard. Although he uh, attacked my foot. You know, it wasn't a major, uh, major attack or anything. But yeah, he did attack my foot. So what I've been doing, and I've got the other, see there's the, that's the whiting true blue rooster, the white one. He was, I've got five whiting true blue roosters now. And what I'm doing is auditioning them because that little dude with the beard was a jerk for a day. <laughs> and then two of the, two of the other roosters have been jerks to me. Just biting my feet and biting my pants. Um, so I want, I want a nice white and true blue Welsman rooster. I had originally picked them out based on their looks, but that's not always the best idea. Um, I want nice, I want nice chickens. So any mean white and true blue roosters are, will not be staying here. So what I'm doing is auditioning them. I got two, these two are out today. Yeah. The other three are there. Yeah. They're separated in that other coop. And that's okay, but I rotate them, uh, I rotate them around so that they can audition for me out here with the flock. I also want to see how they interact with the ladies, and um, I'm really liking this white one. He has not been aggressive towards me at all. I'm not a big fan of white chickens because you know they're easy targets. But yeah, he may have won me over, and I'm still hoping this dude with the beard chills out. You know they're young and. You know, teenage hormones going through him, I'm sure. So it's not a sure thing that he'll be a meanie rooster when he grows up. But I'm going to keep my eye on them here for the next couple weeks before I make a final decision on which rooster to keep. Speaking of roosters, hey there, Wild Barry. <coughs> Wild Barry, you're a daddy. You're a daddy today. I think. I'm pretty sure you're a daddy. Yeah. And how about, okay, okay, well, summer hens, little ladies, and that's the Olivegar. That's the one Olivegar I have back here. She's got a beard. I like her. <laughs> I've got 23 well, summer eggs. I just need one more. Can you guys give me one more egg today so I can stick those in the incubator? And then, Wild Barry, you're going to be a daddy again of purebred well, summers. What do you think? <laughs> Yay! More baby chicks at Bobblehead Homestead. Thank you to number two. She's hatched out three. There are three more eggs underneath her. So, you know, hopefully hopefully that'll work. Um, let's see. Last last time she hatched out four, um, four chicks. So, but that was just, there was a snake involved and I had to replace the eggs. She ended up sitting on the eggs about five days longer than normal. And so, number two is just like the best hen in the world. So, yep, uh, what eggs am I hatching? These are, these were eight olive eggs that I put under her. Only six are 
still active, I should say. Uh, the two olive egg hens that I had back there with Wild Berry, the Wellsomer rooster. Uh, so Wild Berry is most likely the father. Those two olive egg hens are most likely the mothers. One of those hens went to VW Family Farm, and I gotta talk about them here in a second. So these are what's called a back cross. If you, if you breed an olive egger to an olive egger, that would be like second generation. But what I did is I bred an olive egger to a Welsomer rooster. And the idea behind that is to, the Welsomer rooster uh, carries the brown egg genes and hopefully it will put a little bit more brown into his uh, female offspring. And then those offspring will lay a darker olive egg. He's contributing more brown to the inkjet that goes on top of the blue egg to create the olive egg. So that's the, uh, that's the theory behind back crossing an olive egg or hen to a Welsomer rooster. The thing is, there's a 50% chance that any hens from this batch will also will lay dark brown eggs. It's just how the genetics works. I need a chart. I have to, I'm, I have to make a chart so I can point to it every time I'm talking about this stuff. Uh, but yeah, 50% chance that any hens out of here, they will lay dark brown eggs. But there's also a 50% chance they're going to lay a darker olive egg. And that's what I'm going for. And that's why, you know, the first generation olive eggers, it's pretty easy. You just uh, breed a, a dark brown uh, breed to a, a blue egg breed. And, you know, those first generation, you are guaranteed 100% you are going to get some type of a greenish uh, olive egg. If you want to make those eggs darker, then it starts getting tricky as you go down the line. So, yep, those are the eggs under number two, and hopefully the rest of those hatch, and we're uh, happy and going. Uh, again, that brooder rider took, took a lot out of me today, especially when it was raining. Uh, what else can I tell you? VW Family Farm, you got to go check out their video. They hatched a bunch of my baby chicks also. They beat me by a few days. <laughs> uh, when I went up there to trade them, you know, some, some chickens for some food, I bought them all, uh, like, all of my eggs from the previous week, and, and, you know, hey, if they wanted to hatch them, they could. So there were Welsomer eggs in there, there were white and true blue eggs in there, there were olive eggers in there, and I had not separated all my roosters yet, so the fatherhood of those eggs is kind of up in the question, but they're going to have a buffet of egg colors <laughs> out of the hens that come out of there. Uh, they'll probably have, you know, some light green, some dark green, some browns, uh, uh, yeah, any shade of green uh, is bound to turn up out of those, out of those. So it'll be fun watching, I'll put a link down below to VW Family Farm, go, go check them out, they beat me by a few days, hatching out some eggs. Um, what else can I tell you? I don't know, I could probably talk all day about these, about these chickens, but yep. Number two is One Fine Mama. Nah, I didn't get around to unloading the truck. It was raining. It can wait. Hey, the sun came out. Let's do some chicken math. <laughs> I was just counting my chickens because I haven't done that in a while. And that gold lace Wyandotte, you know, so now my numbers have changed. So I was, yeah, I was just thinking, I've got 22 hens and I have seven roosters. So 29, I'm back under 30 chickens. So 22 hens, seven roosters. I have um, wild berries, Welsomer, and the uh, tailless Welsomer rooster, the older guy. Yeah, I'll probably give him a name. So those are two of them. Then I have five whiting true blue roosters. Probably only gonna keep two of those. I'm auditioning them right now, so they better be nice to me. Uh, so yeah, those are the seven roosters. And then my hens, I've got nine whiting true blue hens, four of the uh, four older hens, and five of the, the young pullets that are just starting to lay. So yeah, nine of those. I've got six Welsomers. I've got five olive eggers. Then I've got uh, Vicki Lawrence as a you know, barnyard mix. And number two is, uh, don't know what breed she is either, but Vicki Lawrence is number two. Man, uh, hatching eggs for me? Yeah, they get homes here. So that's my chicken math currently.
It's raining again. I thought I'd do one more video clip before I finish uh, today's video. This is Thursday. These are 23! Only 23! I did not get one more Wellstomer egg today. So, tomorrow, uh, these will go in the incubator. And these are, I sit these on my bed because I uh, shift them uh, a couple times a day. And you want to do that uh, before you hatch eggs so that the so that the yolk does not stick to one side of the egg they will they just have a better chance of developing if the uh, if the yolk doesn't stick to the one side of the egg and anyway what you're wanting to do is mimic nature in nature the uh, mother hen is sitting on the nest and uh, other hens are coming in and laying eggs and so the eggs in there are kind of rolling around and uh, so that's what you want to do. You don't want the yolk to stick to the side of the egg. Uh, today's video, dudes, was going to be so different, but it rained all day, and then number two hatched eggs, and then, you know, one thing leads to another. But there's a big announcement coming, and I don't, I don't have enough time to talk about it right now. So just uh, watch this clip to follow, and go subscribe to their channel. 591 subscribers as I look to this. I want to get them over a thousand subscribers if you guys would please help me out with this. So, uh, big announcement. I'll let you go over to their channel. Please go over to their channel to uh, to learn what that announcement is. And here's a, here's a little uh, teaser. Take her easy, everybody.